This is one of a multiple Ethernet troubleshooting videos. In this topology, we've been told that router one on the top left is not able to ping some of the other routers in the topology. So let's verify that. On router one, show IP interface brief. IP address of router one is 10.1.1.1. .1 .1. Router two's IP address is 10.1.1.2. So from router one, can we ping router two? Pings are failing. Let's confirm the IP address information. So show IP interface gigabit zero zero. IP address is 10.1.1.2 slash 24. Let's do the same over here. Make sure that the subnet mask is correct. IP address is 10.1.1.1 slash 24. This side it's 10.1.1.2 slash 24. So that looks good. Doesn't look like there'll be any other reason why we can't ping to router two. What we'll do in router one is do a debug IP packet. Be careful doing these commands in the real world. You may have to use an access list on that debug. Otherwise you could kill your router with the amount of output that's generated. Okay, so we see messages such as sending full packet. So it looks like router one is forwarding the packet out of the ethernet interface onto the network. A debug IP packet on this side. What I'll do now is repeat one ping only. So only send one packet onto the network. It doesn't look like anything's arriving on this side. If you can, use Wireshark to help you capture traffic. So I'm gonna capture traffic between the switch and router two. And I'll do that ping again. But I don't see any ICMP traffic in Wireshark. We see spanning tree information, but we don't see any other information in Wireshark, we see, for instance, a loop from a device with this MAC address. We see some spanning tree. We don't see any other traffic. So let's see if the traffic is actually getting to the switch. I'll do that ping again. Okay, so there's the ICMP message sent from router one to router two. The fact that we see ICMP means that the router has learnt the MAC address of router two. Source MAC address is zeros ending in a one. Destination MAC address is zeros ending in a two. So it looks like ARP worked, but the pings are failing. Let's confirm the MAC address on router one. MAC address is set to this. Burnt in MAC address is this but the MAC address has been changed to that value. What about on router two? MAC address is this, burnt in MAC address is that. So it looks like the traffic from router one to router two gets sent on this link, but doesn't arrive at router two. What I'll do is do a broadcast. Again, you need to be careful with doing this kind of stuff in the real world, but because this is a lab, I'm gonna show you various options. So notice when I send a broadcast, traffic does arrive at router two. So let me unall that and only do a debug IP ICMP, not a debug packet, because that generates a lot of traffic. I'll unall over here. In other words, turn off all debugging and only send one broadcast. So the broadcast gets to router two. So here we got a reply to the broadcast, it looks like, but it doesn't look like unicast traffic works in the network. So broadcast is sent, it gets to router two, but a unicast doesn't seem to get to router two. So let's have a look at that switch and see if there's a problem on the switch. So on the switch, show 
MAC address table. Okay, can you see a problem in the output? What looks wrong in this output? Notice here we've got a static MAC address for MAC address 2 going out of gigabit 2 and gigabit 3. But switch 2, show interface gigabit 0, shows us that, has a MAC address of 2. So this static MAC address is a problem. Show run pipe include MAC. We've got to this entry in the running config, which shouldn't be there. So no, and I'll paste that in. So no MAC address, show MAC address table. Now we only have dynamic MAC addresses. I'll do a ping from router one to router two. That succeeds now because the MAC address has been learnt properly. Be careful with static MAC addresses in your MAC address table. They will override your dynamic entries and could send traffic to the wrong port in your topology. Okay, so can we ping router three, which has an IP address of 10.1.1.3? No, we can't. Show IP interface gigabit zero zero. So this is the IP address of router three. Debug IP ICMP. Let's do a ping again. It doesn't look like the traffic's arriving at router three. Let's have a look at the MAC address table. I don't see a MAC address for router three. Let's ping router one from router three. Look at this output and see if you see a problem. So show MAC address table showed us previously that this MAC address ending in one was connected to gigabit zero zero on the switch, in other words, over here. But now it looks like that MAC address is on gigabit zero two, this port here. So I'll do a ping from router one again, and let's have a look at the MAC address table. Notice that MAC address is now shown on gigabit zero zero. Ping is finished, so let's do a ping from this side. Notice the MAC address has moved to gigabit zero two. So we're getting MAC addresses flipping on the switch. Let's confirm what the MAC addresses are on these routers. So show interface gigabit zero zero. That's the MAC address of router one. What does it look like on router three? So show interface gigabit zero zero. This is the router's interface. Notice the MAC address. The routers have duplicate MAC addresses. That's not gonna work in an ethernet environment. So let's configure the MAC address as follows. And let's see if router one can ping router three now. Notice the ping succeeds. And that's because the devices have different MAC addresses now available on different ports which is correct per our diagram. Ethernet breaks if you have the same MAC addresses on the same layer two segment. MAC addresses are meant to be unique, but in the real world, you can encounter duplicate MAC addresses. Check your MAC address tables to see if MAC addresses are flipping from one port to another. I hope you enjoyed this video. If it's been of benefit to you, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel I wish you all the very best.